Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Gardener's Corner. I'm Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service in person in Granville Counties. Well, September is National Disaster Preparedness Month. So are you prepared? We've been fairly lucky so far, but it is hurricane season. And um, we are always, you know, likely to get some kind of a tropical storm or something come through North Carolina. Uh, we have certain parts of the states that have experienced floods. We've also had certain parts of the states that have been more prone to wildfires. So are you prepared? We have a presentation that I wanna share with you that I'm gonna kinda of talk about getting prepared, specifically when it comes to uh, food safety uh, and being prepared for different storms. So we're gonna talk about, uh, it's our safe place program at home. So how you can prepare for a disaster as well as how you can recover from this. We're gonna talk about uh, you know, a variety of different natural disasters, what foods you might wanna stock up on, learning how to prepare meals safely if you run out of power or water. This presentation is also good since I know here in Roxboro, um, we are more likely to get snow than some of the counties uh, surrounding us. So even in the months of January or February where we could have inclement weather, even during the summer months where we might have more just thunderstorms that we could lose power for a couple of days, which foods are safe to keep and which foods you need to discard after a disaster if they've, you know, you've been out without power for a while or different things. So we use a couple of different terms uh, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here with, with food safety, but we have some foods that uh, they used to be known as potentially hazardous foods. We call them now TCS foods, time temperature control for safety. And all that means is this is a particular food that you have a certain amount of time that you uh, can have it at a certain temperature. So it's just kind of like if you take food out of your refrigerator, you're not going to leave it there for three days. It has a time limit for how long you can have that outside of refrigeration temperature. Certain foods, again, are more dangerous than others and have more of a stricter control of their time or their temperature. And then we are always concerned about um, ready to eat foods. They are often um, the foods that we have a lot of foodborne outbreaks with because we don't do a lot of cooking with them. Again, they're just ready to eat. You can just kind of grab and go. They oftentimes are, are healthy snacks for you. And when we are talking about uh, you know, appropriate temperatures, the refrigeration temperature is 41 degrees or below. So that's the food that the temperature that's going to keep your food, your cold food safe. And if you have hot foods, maybe something you've cooked or whatever else, you still need to keep it hot. And, you know, if you go to a restaurant that has a buffet, it's going to have regulations that it keeps it at 135 degrees or higher as it's holding your food on that buffet because you don't want to go over there and it's it's gotten cold because it's sat out for, for too long. Thinking back to maybe a natural disaster that you've experienced, um, you know, a lot of us have, have experienced it maybe when you were a kid and watching, you probably might not have paid any attention to what your parents had to do or what they did. Um, but as adults, you know, a lot of times people just rush to go get bread or, or milk, not thinking about a lot of other things that they need to do to, to be prepared. So if you're like me, there's always probably something else you could have done to be a little bit more prepared. And we're going to give you some information uh, about that. So even if there is a disaster, you can be at least as prepared as you, you can be. Again, you can't um, handle every uh, scenario or situation. It's always good to have a go bag. Again, if there is a flood or some kind of natural disaster that you have to leave your home, you know, or if you uh, know a lot of people on the coast definitely have that emergency evacuation bag when there's a hurricane, they're going to be ready to go at a moment's notice. We are often recommending a thermometer because if you are trying to determine if your food is safe, you know, again, you have to keep your cold food cold and your hot food hot. How do you know? if it's cold enough. I can't touch something and be like, yeah, that's below 41 degrees or that's, you know, 45 or, or whatever else. The only way to know is a thermometer. Just like, you know, I can feel someone's head and think, well, they feel a little warm. They might have a little fever, but I will not actually know unless I take their temperature using a thermometer. Food is the same way. 
you can go get a food thermometer at your local grocery store. They're only a couple of bucks. If you want a, um, you know, maybe a digital one, it might cost just a little bit more, but I've seen them at Walmart even just for, for $10. And it would save you a lot of headache and a lot of, you know, time throwing and money, throwing away food that was probably perfectly safe. But if you had had a food thermometer, you would have known that. Taking stock of your refrigerator. If I know that a natural disaster might hit or we might get some snow or something this weekend, it's going to be, okay, we're going to eat some of these leftovers or some of these potentially hazardous foods. You know, the foods that they're not going to be good if we lose power. So let's get them out of here to, you know, right away. <clears throat> Making sure you have enough water. Um, you know, a, each adult needs um, a certain amount of water every day. So we, we recommend at least a gallon of water per person per day that you think you could possibly be without power. And that's just kind of drinking water. You know, you might need some water to flush your toilets or to, to cook with. You know, you can boil if you have, uh, you know, access to, to being able to do that. So purchasing water is uh, something that we do recommending. And it might just be, again, coolers, uh, purchasing ice, things to keep food cold is what we want you to, to focus on. I mentioned the food thermometers. Here's just a couple of example ones. We recommend you having a food thermometer or a thermometer in your refrigerator and your freezers as well, because I often have people call me after a storm and they tell me, you know, they lost power and their deep freeze, which was full of all this food, <clears throat> um, that they're not sure if it's still safe. And I asked them, what's the temperature of your, your thermometer that you have in the, the freezer? And the, if they don't have one, they don't know. And then I can't tell them, well, it, it could be safe, it could not. The recommendation is going to be, you need to toss it because I cannot tell you if your food is safe because I don't know the highest temperature that it got to uh, in, the, in the time that you were without power. So we recommend, again, in the refrigerator, as well as the freezer, a different thermometer. And then if you have deep freezes as well, so you don't have to throw your food away. And then um, the, you know, the digital thermometers that when you're, you're cooking the food as well, we want to make sure that when you're cooking the food, you cook it to the right temperature. And the only way to know that if it's been fully cooked is the temperature. You cannot tell by the color the juices run, or if you touch it and it springs back, or if the meat falls off the bone, or, or any of that kind of stuff, you really have to take the, the temperature. So what should you stock up on? <clears throat> if you are going to you know, make that mad dash to the grocery store to prepare for a natural disaster, we don't want you to buy the bad things. I don't know why everybody goes and buys milk. Because, you know, we're going to tell you it's best if you don't open your refrigerator, open it as, uh, you know, least amount of times as you can once you have lost power. Because every time you, you open it, it um, it's getting warmer and warmer inside that refrigerator. So the longer you can leave it shut is good. So the things that you can stock up on or that you are, are okay to eat is um, your hard cheeses, such as the cheddar and the Parmesan or, or Romano. The individually packaged cultured dairy products like the yogurts and the sour cream, individually wrapped cheese sticks, shelf stable milk boxes or, you know, other alternative milk and things. Protein, you're going to need some some energy and some some meat there. So uh, to get protein, since you might not have access to all the meat, hard boiled eggs are um, are, are good. Um, <clears throat> shelf stable dry fermented meats such as your your pepperoni. We would also do, um, I think like country hams because they don't have to, you know, they're packaged uh, well enough that they don't have to be refrigerated. And then just peanut butter or nuts in general, you know, other kinds of, of butters is a good source of protein as, as well. Anything else that's shelf stable, can, box, pouched, you know, food, your soups, your stews, chilies, pastas, um, even, even fruits and veggies, uh, fruits and veggie juices. Uh, we often have canned, products, canned tuna, chicken, salmon, or even the little pouches of, of tuna pouches or uh, chicken pouches or whatever they have at the store instead of buying a can, because again, you need access to a can opener as, as well. <clears throat> um, and then your grain products, you know, the breads and the muffins and the popcorn and the granola bars. Uh, part of my job is also to teach health and nutrition. So I would like, you know, the stuff that I tell you to be healthy as, you know, as, as you can get, 
but some of these things that are individually packed shelf stable are going to be the best things for a uh, disaster now don't go crazy with the amount that you're buying because then you're going to have so much extra possibly if the disaster is not that big of a thing or again if your home's destroyed all this extra snacks are you know uh, buried underneath your house it's not going to do you any good and um <clears throat> or you buy so much of it that it expires before you're able to eat it or it goes stale or something like that and don't forget your produce your whole fruits or, or veggies things that you know can sit out on your counter um other things that um are, are good again your baby carrots grapes apples if you um cut up fruits and veggies those are okay except certain tomatoes and melons and of course leafy greens because those are some of the potentially hazardous food once you cut up a tomato or a melon it becomes a food that has to be in the refrigerator so um but if you just have a whole tomato right there and you're going to slice it later and you're going to eat it all before uh you know when you're done with your meal then that's perfectly fine we always also purchase uh applesauce um in the little like little pouches or um whatever else that you know fruit cups those things kind of thing that are individually packaged so i'm not having to go to the refrigerator to get something you know for the kids to snack on um this is food safe shelf stable all that so we have some fact or fiction questions throughout this, this presentation, um, but <clears throat> um, you can drink bottled water any any time. Um, you know, it doesn't just have to be when your, your water source is, is compromised. It's always good uh, to have water on hand in case your water source does get compromised. We've heard of a couple of different places that um, have tainted drinking water. So you always wanna have some, some backup there. So purchasing enough uh, water, um, whether it's bottle water, whatever, to again, just brush your teeth with um, and, uh, you know, they're cooking with, making sure your dogs have water, making sure your dogs have dog food as well as important. If you have a young child, you need, you know, formula and plenty of diapers and those kinds of things. If anyone in your household has medication, they need to make sure they have um, a good bit of medication stocked up. So they're not going to run out and maybe the pharmacy's out of power for a couple of days or something like that. So um, just checking that um, you're keeping your, your food and you're purchasing the right food. And again, that food thermometer, you're keeping it cold, you're checking your refrigerator. But if your refrigerator is working and it's good, it should keep your food safe for about four hours, even without food. So once they lose power, it's good uh, for four hours. Now, if it's going to be longer than four hours, which most, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> power outages are usually a little bit longer than that, then if you have that cooler or um, something that you can, um, you know, put your food in a cooler in order to keep it cold enough, we want to make sure you're keeping your raw foods separated from your ready to eat food. So you might need multiple coolers as, as well. Um, again, your freezer would last about uh, a full freezer, depending on how, how it's stocked. So if you have a full uh, freezer that is full, chalked full of stuff, it'll be good for two days without power, okay? If it's half full, then it'll be good for about one day without power because everything is in there is cold enough. People do ask me, well, um, what if it was longer than that or, or, or whatever else? And I'm like, basically your freezer got warm enough, it became a refrigerator. If the temperature is not above the 41 degrees in your freezer, then your freezer just became a refrigerator. So your food is still food safe. Um, it might have all thawed. So um, it could start to thaw. And then if you just keep it in there, when you get your power back, it could refreeze. There's nothing wrong with it if it thawed and it refroze. The quality might lose, um, deteriorate a little bit, but the food safety is still fine. Um, even in that situation. Uh, but again, it just depends on how long it was without power. So we do recommend you keeping your, your freezer full. This is a great place to store some of your water or your if you buy bags of ice or ice packs or whatever else that you can use later to put in your, your coolers to, to keep your food cold. Um, so we're gonna take a brief break to get a word on from one of our sponsors, and then we will be back and talk a little bit more about natural disasters and how to recover from them. What do you do with your food afterwards? What's good, what's not, as we celebrate National Disaster Preparedness Month. E.B. Harris Auctioneers NCAL 
1468 announces the farm equipment auction for F.C. Winston Jr. Estate and others to be held Saturday, September 17th at 930 sales site address 5206 Highway 96 in Youngsville. For terms to see photographs of items up for auction and more information, log on to ebharris.com or call EB at 252-257-2140. The Complete Auction Service, EB Harris Auctioneers. You will find work and field ready equipment, tractors, trailers, vehicles, hay, grain, and livestock equipment, plus guns, shop equipment, and lots more. Bring a friend. Two sales will be running at the same time, Saturday, September 17th at 930 at 5206 Highway 96 in Youngsville. For more information, log on to ebharris.com or call 252-257-2140. Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers is located 613 Lewis Street in Oxford. Open for business weekdays 8 to 5, Saturdays 9 till 1. Call 1-800-221-9267 or 919-693-4626. Al, Hillary, and Will, there to serve you with all of your golf car needs. They have club car. Easy Go and Yamaha units. If you're wanting a gasoline or an electric golf car, they have them at Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Trojan Batteries, Parts and Repair Service. Thinking about a new grill? Check out the Wilmington Grills at Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Speaking of trailers, they have utility, dump, enclosed, stock, and equipment trailers. That's Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers in Oxford, 919-693-4626, toll free, 1-800-221-9267. Sandling Golf Cars and Trailers. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. I'm Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Extension Agent. Before the break, we were talking about natural disasters because September is Natural Disaster Preparedness Month. And we want you to be prepared, whether it's a hurricane, a flood, a wildfire, or even just some of the snow or inclement weather or thunderstorms that we get here occasionally. So we have a presentation that we're going to uh, continue to, to be showing with you guys. So we first started talking about preparing for the disaster. You know, what foods you need to keep, which foods are uh, food safe, how long the food would last in your refrigerator, in your freezer, and all that. So if you missed that part of the presentation and you like some information, you can always contact the local extension office. We're located uh, in Person County at the Person County Office Building. And then in uh, Granville County, we're at the, uh, the old biofuels building off of Providence Road and Oxford Outer Loop road as well. So just give us a call and, and let us know what kind of information you're interested in, or if you want some food safe uh, handouts, we can send those to you as well. But to, to talk about uh, after the storm too. So we have a lot of people that are pretty good or you've done it enough preparing, but you know, if you're like me, been pretty lucky with some of the storms. Every time I do a really good job preparing for the storms, nothing happens. And I know as I say that I need to knock on wood because I'm going to going to jinx myself there. But we do want to talk about the recovery, what to do after a, a, a natural disaster or a storm. So if you need to use water, um, if, if your water has been compromised, you know, there's, we want to make sure that you are using safe water. So you can do a couple of uh, methods. So one of the probably is easiest ones to do is just boil it. Uh, bring it to a rolling bowl for about a minute and then let it cool. Now you can treat it by adding some unscented bleach that hasn't been open for a while. So, I mean, this is brand new new bleach here and it's unscented. Um, the, again, it depends on whether it's clear water or cloudy water, how much you're, you're going to add for that, um, whether it's an eighth of a teaspoon per gallon. So it's not much. You know, it's only a tiny little bit. I mean, one eighth of a teaspoon is a very small amount. 
to an entire gallon of a water. Um, and then if it's cloudy water, you add a little bit more for a fourth of a teaspoon of bleach per gallon, and then wait 30 minutes before drinking or using. I prefer the, the rolling, boil, um, rolling boil method um, just because I, you know, chemicals, a, a lot of people are concerned about different chemicals in their, their water and stuff like that. But these are the two methods that our food safety specialists have recommended to us to, to share with you all to get your water to be safe uh, to drink. But if you are trying to prepare food without safe water, again, always try to wash your hands if you do have maybe some water to wash your hands with, but maybe not cook with. Um, if you are, you know, don't have safe water, we want your fruits and vegetables to be washed with clean water. If you have a recipe that calls for, for water and you don't have clean water, if there's any broths or stalks or other things that you have from either fruits or vegetables, you can substitute those as, as well. We recommend you hand wash your dishes and utensils with clean treated water and allow them to, to air, air dry. Um, again, most of, uh, you know, us, we're, we're so used to our dishwashers, we, we forget how to hand wash them. Um, but using safe water, that might be when you're preparing step, it might be you need to buy paper plates and utensils and things like that. So you don't have to bother with cleaning. Maybe you just got to clean your pots, but you don't have to clean plates or, or something like that. If you're preparing a meal without power, this is where a lot of people, um, if you're used to camping, you, you do this all the time. Maybe using, uh, we often, you know, have a grill. We have a propane grill, so we have to make sure we're stocked up on propane takes um, there. But you don't want to use these inside a building, whether you have, um, you know, you know, if you have an outdoor fireplace or a camp stove or something like this, you, you want to do that outside. Don't bring the grill inside or, or any of that stuff. And then pay attention to which foods you're choosing. You know, choose foods that are going to, you know, cook quickly. If you have something uh, that's already been commercially packaged, eat it straight for the container. If, if it doesn't need to be heated, you know, I mean, there's plenty of our veggies and stuff that we do warm them in the microwave or in the stove or something like that. But there's nothing to say you can't just open a can of sweet peas and just start eating out of it or dishing it on the, on the plate. Um, when you don't have power, you get kind of, uh, if you're hungry, you'll, you'll, you'll eat there as, as well. You'll eat what you, what you got. Since Roxborough and uh, even Granville County are familiar with a lot of winter storms, um, they're in emergencies only. You know, you can store food in snow banks. So if you've got snow outside on the ground, you do want to monitor the temperature of your, your food. I know in some places across the country where it's really cold in wintertime, they'll do this all the time. They'll go put it out on, on, on the porch. But we want to recommend if you are storing food outside, avoid it putting it in, in direct sunlight. And then you still want to have it in some kind of container because, you know, there's there's always different wild animals or even just neighborhood animals. I mean, my dogs will tear into something if I leave it outside. Uh, the neighborhood cats will as, as well. And you want to keep the food at that refrigeration temperature of 41 degrees or below. Um, so there are so many different uh, possible, possible foodborne issues when it comes to, to storms. Um, or whether it's winter or hurricane or whatever else. And, um, and it could be a, a variety of different reasons. I mean, it could be it grew bacteria. It could be, you know, a parasite or fungus or something like this. There's a difference between food safety and food quality. So the quality is kind of that spoilage. It doesn't look right. It doesn't smell right. You cannot smell or see foodborne illness. I mean, you can, you can see mold growing, but you can't smell it and just, oh, that's, that's got some bacteria. That's got salmonella on it. It, it. it means that it has hit a point that the quality has deteriorated. Might not make you sick, but it ain't gonna taste right. It's gonna taste funky or it's gonna taste stale or, or just whatever else. So there is a difference between pathogens and actually being just spoiled. Um, so it, 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 just, it just depends on which, um, which pathogen we're, pathogen we're talking about, because some factor into foodborne illness, some just factor into to spoilage there as well. So we got some fact or fiction questions we were asking during our presentation. So after losing power to your refrigerator or freezers, you can keep meats such as pork. Again, it just depends on how long you've, you've lost 
uh, power. So that's what kind of where we're gonna work. We're, we're gonna talk about. So we've got a little list. We're gonna share you. We do have a handout with this information. So if you'd like this handout, again, just contact our extension office and we can get that uh, to you. We'll also print some copies and stick it on uh, out in the hallway here at the Percy County Office Building if you'd like to drop by and um, get some. Okay. So <clears throat> keep or toss. Here's our our chart right here. So one of the reasons I told you you need a, a food thermometer is so you can know what temperature your food gets up to. It's also why you need a refrigerator thermometer and a freezer thermometer. As you go look and you're like, wow, my refrigerator, you know, got a little bit warmer. It got above uh, 45 degrees. So now we go to the time. We're always concerned about the temperature of the food and we're concerned about the time, how long. So it's not that it was just, oh, it got above refrigeration temperature. It got above refrigeration temperature for a certain amount of time. That's where it gets dangerous. So it is good in your refrigerator for up to four hours. So even if it gets up to that 55 uh, degrees there, you can still keep that, that product there. Um, if it gets uh, a little bit uh, above that, or if it's for a certain amount of time, it, it, it changes. You can see the chart kind of is like a little step in uh, staircase there. Um, if you have Anything above refrigeration temperature for nine to 15 hours, which oftentimes when we lose power, it could be for a day or two. So it's very likely that you might have to discard stuff, but there's a certain list of things you need to discard. It might not be everything, but um, if you have it, it just, so just pay attention to that time and this temperature. And again, this, this chart is on that handout um, that, that will tell you, okay, this is how long if it got up to, the, to this temperature there. So what are you going to keep or you're going to toss? Well, here's the list. You can, um, again, if I'm going to go back real quick. If it's in this green thing that it got to this temperature for this amount of time, that's your keep product. If it is on the red side of the uh, chart in a minute, you're going to toss it. So you can keep your butter. You can keep your processed cheeses, your hard cheeses, your cultured dairy products, yogurt, sour cream, buttermilk, those things. Okay. Now, it does have other dairy products. You see it's a little bit bolder there. Your milk, your cream, evaporated milk, ice cream, uh, eggnog, whatever. Now, these things might spoil. Again, they might not make you sick, but they could turn and taste not right, and they could smell or whatever else. So these are on the keep list. Again, anything above 9 to 15 hours is tossed at all. But if it's uh, less hours than that, then it depends on the on the temperature how long uh, you can. We do want you to, to toss any opened uh, baby formula, any of your soft cheeses. So you kind of have a list here of what your soft cheese is versus uh, the hard cheese. Any of your um, sauces, spreads, jams, condiments, those things. So you can keep your, your ketchups and your mustards and your jellies and your soy sauces and vinegar-based dressings you can keep. Uh, Tomato-based pizza or spaghetti sauces that do not have meat if you happen to have that in your refrigerator. Mayonnaise, tartar sauce, these things are the things that you can keep up to a certain amount of time. Again, anything above nine to 15 hours without power, then you might, you're gonna have to, to toss that, okay? Um, anything, toss anything that's on that toss list. But any of the other stuff, any of the creamy based stuff, or if you've opened your horseradish or, or whatever else. So there's there's kind of, a, again, there's a list. So you might really just want to get this handout because I'm just going to kind of run through this fairly quickly here. If you happen to have any pastries or pies or baked goods, if you have fruit pies, they're okay. Your, your breads, your rolls and your cakes, as long as there's not some kind of cream or custard filling, like if you have donuts, that's okay. But if it's filled with some kind of cream or custard, that's going to go onto the cream field pastry side, and you're going to have to toss those. Uh, your waffles, your pancakes, your bagels, again, these are just bread products. They are um, uh, low acid products, so we're not concerned uh, about them. Um, any of your biscuits or crescent rolls or, or whatever else that you have that you're going to bake, they're, they're good to, to keep. And you can see just the cream cheese, cream custard cheese filled cheesecake kind of stuff is what you're going gonna to toss. Your raw meats, this is kind of, again, uh, it, it depends on if you're doing, if following all of the recommendations. So all the meat you have in your, your refrigerator, depending on the amount of time you uh, were out without a power or the temperature it got up to, 
you can keep your raw meats. You don't, and, and I know some of you are like, oh my God, I've thrown so much meat away before. If you are going to cook it fully, and when I say fully, I mean having a food thermometer to test the temperature of your food, okay? So that way you can guarantee it is cooked and you've killed any of that bacteria that might've started growing. Um, because if it's if it doesn't have the food within a certain, um, if it's not refrigerated, bacteria is going to start to grow. That bacteria will turn into a foodborne pathogen. You can kill that bacteria by cooking it to the right temperature and fully cooking it. So if you are going to fully cook it using a food thermometer to guarantee that you get it up to the temperature it's supposed to be at, and if you don't know the temperature, again, we have handouts. I even have magnets you can stick on your refrigerator to know how much, uh, what temperature it should be, okay? And then uh, same thing, if you have raw meat substitutes that are gonna be fully cooked, uh, your eggs, if they're, they're uncooked or hard boiled, dried, cu uh, cured, fermented meats and sausages, uh, any raw bacon or even hot dog packages that you are going to fully cook. So you just don't, you're not eating the raw hot dogs after you lost power and, and didn't have it. But any of your leftover meats, if you had lasagna or something or some kind of meat last night and then you lost power, any leftovers, toss it, okay? Any of your salads that were made for meat, uh, the tuna salad, the chicken salad, you know, any of those kinds of things, eggs. I know it's not meat, but it's a, it's a protein product. So your egg salads have to be tossed. Your gravies, your deli meats, they have to definitely be tossed because that can, that can make you really sick, uh, the leftover turkeys or, or those kinds of uh, ham meats or, or whatever else. And any, any cooked dishes, any of your cooked pies or puddings or egg dishes that you use uh, eggs for. You can keep your leftover pizza if it uh, has just cheese or pepperoni or, or bacon. If you start putting some veggies on, which I hope you put some veggies on your, your pizza, but if it just is cheese or cheese and pepperoni or cheese and bacon, you can keep those, okay? Because those are, uh, again, you can keep all of those products on the keep list. So if you put all of the breads and the cheeses and the pepperoni, which I told you you could keep individually, if you put that together and make the pizza, yeah, you can keep that pizza then. But as long as it doesn't have um, fresh veggies that had been on that. You wanna toss, again, any cooked pasta, rice, potatoes, leftovers, um, any of those kinds of uh, things you definitely want to, to cook as, as well. I mean, get rid of. Uh, and toss. So we are going to, we're at the end of our presentation here, and we are going to um, take another brief break and get a word on from uh, one of our sponsors. Little by little, fall is starting to come together, and it's time to head to T.G. Brooks Company. This is the best time of the year right now to get your yard off to its best start. Remember, to kill those weeds in the lawn and get ready for fall seeding. You can get Fertilome and High Yield Lawn and Garden products right there. T.G. Brooks Company has the lawn chemicals to do the job. This is the best time of the year of all to enrich and repair the lawn. T.G. Brooks Company has new top choice turf grass seed for greener and plusher lawns and also available are rental lawn aerators and pull and walk behind pluggers and spreaders, bag and bulk mulches and bulk planting soil. They have your fertilizers and lime. They still have plenty of lawn sprinklers, water hose, and water hose fittings if you need those hose repaired. If you need yard tools, they're in abundance, plus wheelbarrows. Pick up a couple of nice rakes while you're there. Fresh pine needles, and if you are the homeowner or if you are the professional landscaper, both get the same kind of service, and they are set up to handle commercial accounts. No matter what part of Person or Durham County, it is worth the drive to come to the one source to handle your fall needs for lawn and flower garden. They have been around since 1936, and people have trusted T.G. Brooks Company for sound advice when it comes to lawn, garden, and home. They take pride in serving the homeowner, farmer, and those in construction. 411 Helena Mariah Road, next door to Community Pharmacy in Timberlake. Granville Auction Company will be hosting their Fall Farm and Consignment Auction Saturday, September 17th at 5091 Gooch's Mill Road in Berea. This auction starts at 8.30 a.m. 
Granville Auction Company will be selling a variety of items such as tractors, trucks, farm equipment, shop tools, and so much more. To view their full auction listing, look up their website. It's granvilleauction.com. If you're unable to make it to the auction on Saturday, you can also bid online through their website, granvilleauction.com. Again, that's Saturday, September 17th at 5091 Gooch's Mill Road in Oxford. Auction starts at 8.30 a.m. If you have any questions or would like to add items to the auction, call Perry at 919-747-1219. That's 919-747-1219. Granville Auction Company, NCAFL number 10414. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. I'm Jennifer Brown, Family Consumer Science Extension Agent. Before the break, we talked about uh, disaster preparedness and recovery because September is a disaster preparedness month. And we want you to be prepared. We want you to make sure that you have, um, you know, done things to be food safe, that you have Purchase the right things when you go to the store and you're not just buying all of these items that you don't need. But we also want to let you know about a variety of different programs that we have uh, coming up over the next couple of months. Again, here at the Extension Office, not only do we have the Family Consumer Science Program, we have the, the 4-H program. We also have Extension agents that uh, work in the fields of livestock, horticulture, and crops. They help a lot of our farmers in the community, but they also just help just individuals who might have a couple of, you know, livestock. Maybe they don't have a farm, but they've got some, some chickens or they've got a, a cow or some goats or, or something like that. We also have a horticulture agent that helps a lot of, you know, again, the commercial horticulture farms, but also just our home horticulturists. If you have a garden and you have, or a, a tree, a fruit tree of some kind that uh, has some kind of plant disease or insect infestation or whatever else, we wanna be, be able to make sure that we are providing the correct information to you and making sure that we are, are helping you, um, you know, answer your questions as, as best as, as we can and that you're not purchasing equipment or things that, that you don't need. So along with that, we are joining forces with a lot of other agencies this weekend to help um, with the Household Hazardous Waste Collection event. It's presented by the Person County Recycling Center. But this Saturday, so tomorrow, Saturday, September 10th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the, um, the parking lot of the Health and Human Services Building, DSS Health Department, over near La Casina on uh 355 South Madison Boulevard, there will be a collection day event. They will be collecting um, a variety of things. We've got the, the poster up on our, our website, as well as I'm sure it's on the um, Facebook page for the Recycling Center, but paints. So if you, maybe you've painted a room and you have some old paint cans uh, or stains or thinners or solvents or varnishes or any adhesives or glues, resins, any kind of waste fuels, kerosene or gasoline or whatever else, degreaser, brake fluid, transmission fluid. Maybe you do some of your own um, maintenance on your on your vehicle. They are collecting these things, any um, other uh, weed killers, insecticides, pesticides, all kinds of stuff that uh, they they are doing too. Even any and all types of batteries. So your car, your cell phone, laptop battery, uh, just normal batteries uh, as well. They will be collecting over-the-counter medications, prescription drugs, uh, if you have some, some ammunition, fireworks, any kind of you know, sharp things, 20-pound uh, propane tanks. So again, no bigger than 20-pound, but they'll be collecting propane tanks. And they will have confidential paper shredding truck available as well. So maybe you just have a, uh, some papers you need to get rid of. We just taught a workshop. Our, our monthly lunch and learn in September is on decluttering. So we were trying to cut the clutter and I was giving people tips of how to get rid of some of these things. So I said, well, come out this weekend on this Saturday and get rid of some of this uh, stuff as, as well. So um, this event is completely free of charge to the Person County residents. Um, and uh, if you're in Granville County and you're listening, I know Granville County uh, often has one as well. I don't have a specific date yet, but I think I saw one is on the radar. So I will share that when, when I get that. 
So that's one event that, that's uh, coming up right now. But we also have uh, a couple of different uh, workshop things. So the first workshop series that I have planned or the next one is our uh, Dining with Diabetes program. So I've got two diabetes programs for you. So pay attention to which one's which and where it's located at. You're, you're welcome to come to either one and both are free of charge. Um, there is a little registration limit on, on one of them, but uh, we'll, I'll give you those details. So the Dining with Diabetes workshop, this is gonna take place in Granville County, but it's just in the Stovall area. So it's not too far over the, the county line there, okay? This is a, um, it's a cooking and nutrition education program designed for people who have diabetes or it's their, maybe their family caregivers. So maybe you don't have diabetes, but your husband or significant other does. We're going to have four classes and we're going to spread them out over four months. So from September to December, it's going to be on the third Tuesdays of every month at 10 a.m. So the first one coming up will be September 20th at the North Granville Senior Center in Stovall. It's right off of US 15 there. It is free to attend. Um, We're gonna be providing again, a, a lesson with information about eating with diabetes. Each session is gonna talk about a different thing. So, you know, we'll kind of start off maybe with kind of an introduction um, into, into diabetes and, and eating and nutrition and that kind of stuff. And then I think we have one on carbs or carbohydrates. We have the next session, I believe, is on sweeteners. And then I think the last one is kind of focusing on um, the fruits and veggies, what's good to eat and um, whatnot. We hope to have a little small uh, taste test at each session. Um, if nothing else, we will have a variety of different recipes that we will definitely share with you. Uh, as well. So again, the third Tuesdays of each month at 10 a.m. from September to, to December is our Dining with Diabetes program. You can just call us or you can call the North Granville Senior Center to register for that event. I can send you the flyer if you want to email me or, or whatever else. So that's the first thing coming up. Again, I mentioned that our um, September Lunch and Learn is focused on decluttering. So the we did our in-person workshop yesterday, but we still have a virtual one. Every month we're doing our Lunch and Learns in person as well as virtually. So you can uh, come to, to one and get lunch and that costs $5. Or if it suits your schedule better and you uh, have the technology to do so, you can join us on Zoom. It'll be the last Tuesday of September. I believe it's the 27th. They're always at noon, so noon to one, it's about an hour. Um, again, that's free to attend. We have all of the information for all of these events, the registration filers, all of them are on our Facebook page. Um, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, at Person Granville FCS. You can also probably search up Food for Thought and um, it'll connect you to our Family Consumer Science Program with Person and, and Granville Counties. So that's this month in September. But as I mentioned, every month we do a uh, lunch and learn. So the one in October is going to be focused on dining out. So I've already had people ask me, no, we're, we're not going in, out to eat. We're not going to go to a restaurant or, or any of that kind of stuff. But we're going to share information with you about how you can eat healthy while dining out. Because we understand that sometimes that just suits people's way of life easier. If you're out and about, or <coughs> excuse me, if you're, um, you know, if you just want to enjoy yourself, whether it's I'm going out to eat because there's a special event, we want you to be able to enjoy that, but not, you know, go go crazy. There's always healthier options. Uh, it's always healthiest to eat at home, but there are healthier options to when you are dining out. So the in-person uh, workshops are, is going to be the second Tuesday of October. So October 11th, again, from 12 to one here at the Person County Office Building. And then the virtual one will be on the third Tuesday. So two weeks back to back in person and then virtual October 18th, 12 to one as well to, to register. The in-person ones are always $5. We provide you handouts as well as a nice healthy and delicious lunch. And the virtual one is free. We will, uh, if you can't join us live at that one, we will record it. We can always share the recording and the handouts. We send that in an email after the event. So hopefully you can join us in either September or October. 
But if not, we have another event already planned for November for you. So this is the second diabetes program that I was uh, talking about. This is our Living Healthy with Diabetes program. And this one is going to take place here in Person County. So the Dining with Diabetes, which is once for every you know four months, is uh, in Granville County. But this is our Person County one. It doesn't matter which county you live in, you can drive to either, either one. It's perfectly fine. This is a diabetes self-management program. So if you have type 2 diabetes, this program is for you. This is a six-week program, and it will help you learn how to live a healthy life so that you can better manage your diabetes, okay? This is going to be on Tuesday afternoons starting the 1st of November. So November 1st, every Tuesday for six weeks. So November 1st through December 6th. This one is a little bit longer because it's a little bit more intensive. So it's six weeks, but it's two hours each week. And it's from two to four in the afternoon. So November 1st through December 6th, our Living Healthy with Diabetes program from two to 4 p.m. each afternoon. It will take place here at the Person County Office building at our extension office. We want you to be able at, to be at all six sessions, okay? Because you're going to get the most benefit there. So please don't register if you're like, oh, I'm going to be out of town for like three weeks or something like this. Because each session, we are teaching you new skills and it builds upon the rest. We keep this class at a size of no more than 15 people because we are going to have some really good discussions and we need to make sure that we have a small enough group that we can really get into the weeds here. We can get some input and we can, you, everybody has a chance to share. That's also why it's important to make sure that you can attend all six sessions. We are gonna be continuing to offer this program. I'm sure, you know, we, we used to do it like every, every year. So we're hoping to get back into that swing of things. So if you can't attend this one, then um, call us and say, I wanna be on the waiting list for the, for the next one. And we will call you and let you know as soon as we have those dates figured out for that. We do require registration for this. It is free to attend, but we do require registration. You can contact the Person County Extension Office at 336-599-1195. And we're just gonna need some basic information, um, you know, name, email address, phone number, as well as, again, this program is for people who have type two diabetes. So that is, uh, you know, we're gonna wanna know your, your health condition and just knowing if, uh, if you do qualify for this, this program, if you're maybe just pre-diabetic or, or whatever else, then um, you don't need this level of this program, but we have another one that, that would suit you as well. We are gonna cover a variety of different topics, uh, managing your symptoms of diabetes, using relaxation techniques, because stress is a big factor in our health. We're going to make sure, you know, you know what eating healthy and exercising. Every time people go to their doctors and they're diagnosed with something and they're told, well, you need to eat healthy and you need to exercise. If I knew how to do that, I wouldn't be in this condition possibly. So we're going to make sure that you know some of the tips and tricks to, to do that and to, to help you along your, your journey. It also requires whenever you have some kind of a chronic illness like diabetes, it requires a certain level of communication skills. You need to know what questions to ask your doctor, to ask your pharmacist. You need to be your own advocate for your health. We're gonna talk about monitoring your blood sugar as well as even something just as simple as checking your feet. Um, diabetics are known to have a lot of different foot problems and they can really escalate very quickly if you don't treat them or take care of them or check them or whatever else like you're supposed to. So this Living Healthy with Diabetes program uh, would not be possible without a wonderful collaborative partner in the Person County Health Department. It's the Extension Office and Health Department. We come together and we co-facilitate this program. So you're going to get two uh, instructors that have been teaching this for, for several years now to provide two different perspectives and a lot of good information. And um, just give us a call at Extension Office if you're interested in either the Dining with Diabetes program which is the, the once a month for four months, hour long program that's gonna be in Stovall. Um, if you wanna come to uh, our Lunch and Learns, whether it's in person or virtual, or if you want to register or learn more about our Living Healthy with Diabetes program, which is the six week, two hours a week program on Tuesdays starting in November. And these are just some of the things that we have uh, planned 
now for the, for the next couple of months. If you have information that you need about your health, your wellness, nutrition, eating healthy, exercising, whatever, please don't hesitate to call the extension office to, to let us know what information you need, as well as we're always looking for ideas for future and upcoming programs. If I have enough people that ask me about a specific topic, it's going to be a workshop that I, I put on my schedule in, in the next couple of months. But we hope to uh, see you around at a couple of our programs. And thank you for joining us at uh, this week's edition of the Gardener's Corner. And we are going to uh, leave now you with another one of our wonderful sponsors that helped make this program uh, possible. Take care, guys. Jason Acock, Auctioneering, NCAL 6679, announces an auction for Stewart and Ann Sykes to be held Saturday, September 17th at 10 a.m. at 19320 Highway 33 Northwest in Whitakers. This auction will be on-site bidding only, no bias premium for any auction from Jason Acock Auctioneering. For terms, pictures of auction items, and more information, log on to jasonacockauctioneering.com. You can also call Jason at 919-495-0285. Up for auction, a 2001-2500 Chevrolet 4x4 truck, a Mahindra Emax 20 tractor, Kubota Zero Turn More, an Easy Go golf cart, lots of shop tools, household items including furniture and collectibles. Please note, all items must be removed the day of the sale. This will be Saturday, September 17th at 10 a.m. at 19320 Highway 33 Northwest in Whitakers. It's an auction sale for Stewart and Ann Sykes. Call Jason Acock at 919-495-0285 or log on to jasonacockauctioneering.com for more information.